Tanya, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to say a little bit about you. And then it wouldn't be fair because I know you have a lot and one part of me introducing you is not enough. So uh, <laughs> Tanya is a Tara life coach born uh, psychic media. And she was voted number three psychic in the world. And she is here today. And this in this group, I wanted to bring amazing people like yourself so we can connect the name with the face so people can see who you are. But without further ado, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you so much for having me on, Valerie. It is such a, a, a blessing to be here for women, helping women, which is so, so important. And so a little bit about myself is I just, I love to serve, I love to share, and I love to shine. And what that means is serving is serving spirit and sharing is sharing my gifts, my time, my energy, with women to support them in lifting and shifting their lives, their consciousness and their businesses. And then the shine is we're here to, you know, as the Kabbalah says, men are the light and we are the vessel. But that means that as the vessel, we contain the light, we radiate that light. And so when we allow ourselves to show up as we are and to come together in collaborations like this and support of each other, you know, one of my favorite Tanyaisms, I call it, is one sparkles, but many glow. And so that's a little bit about me and how I'm here to truly be helpful in supporting women grow and expand, not just their, their lives, but their, their hearts, their minds, and their, their, their businesses. So thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for being part of this group. You're such an amazing person. I know you're a little bit personal. And we had another uh, meeting a couple of weeks ago. And we talked about a lot of good stuff that I posted that on my um, podcast, which is Real Talk with Coach Malone. If ladies, if you want to hear more about that, you guys can visit there. Tanya, me, and talk about other stuff um, when, when it comes to spirituality and how women can support women and how we're here for each other to lift each other up to shine like you said to be for each other and um we can relate we in this group we can relate to each other and say listen we are mom we are uh, we're a spouse we're uh, you know entrepreneurs uh, life gets too tough and and <laughs> sometimes you just like you don't know where to start where to finish so my goal for this group is to bring people and like yourself an amazing person like yourself to say hey listen it's doable we can do it uh you know we all together we're strong uh here you can talk about it you can ask for help and you can uh, be yourself and more importantly understand that we are all in the same boat the reason i have you over here because you're such an amazing person like i said i know you personally but i want for women to know in this group that what it means to actually be as in yourself what do you do that to keep yourself grounded to you're very spiritual you're very calm you're very cool you're very um organized uh well put together and you're a mom you're a wife you're an entrepreneur so how what do you do and how do you keep yourself uh, grounded to uh, be in touch with your inside and um uh, function and reality especially in today's society that so much emotions are going around you know, that is such a great question. And I'm so glad you asked because, you know, think about it this way. You know, we feed ourselves every day. We do our beautiful things to make ourselves look great. And we do all these things on the outside. But what do we do for the inside? And so I start my day with spirit. That's the first thing I do. And we have to do the same type of thing. We have to feed our spirit as much as we feed this body temple. We're obsessed with our bodies, but we really need to shift that obsession into our spirit selves. Because once we leave this body, which is only here for a short time period, actually, once we leave this body, we go back into spirit. And many of us know this, you know, and as a psychic medium and as women, we are highly intuitive. The reason we're highly intuitive is because this is how we were created. And when we allow ourselves to access that spiritual self, that's how we know, go this way, beloved, or that's not the right, this isn't the right time for that, beloved. But we're so caught up in the external that we don't feed our spirits first. And so we've got to feed our spirit first before we feed this body temple with our hair and nails and all of that. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but when you feed your spirit first, then spirit will feed you literally and figuratively. You know, 
if I don't do my prayer, my meditation, my, my yoga every day, I'm off. I'm off because I haven't connected to my higher self. And when I say, take a moment, say, you be my guide, you direct me, lead me, teach me today. What I'm saying is, I don't know what I'm doing, but spirit does. That the same spirit that created nature and created everything, the moon, the stars and everything, created everything in perfect harmony and created me and us knows way more than I do. And so by feeding spirit first, and that's, you know, lighting my incense, saging the house every day, that is, you know, pouring libations to the ancestors, that is the prayer, the meditation, the, you know, positive affirmations, the mantras, my Course in Miracles, all these different practices have to come before I do anything for myself, because it's not about me. It's about what I am bringing forth, what spirit has in store for me for this day, instead of me thinking I need, I know everything, I know nothing. And yeah. so having that spiritual food first, that, that's, that's how I feed myself before I feed my, this body anything. Yeah, well, that's why you're uh, that's why you're great to be here today and talk about it because you actually hear spirits and you're really you're that's what your field of work is. You actually, for some of us like myself and other women that are we hear about the spirit and we have a little knowledge about it, we know that there's a higher power and we have a spirit and we have to feed our spirit. But like you said, unfortunately, it's kind of like a backward. We take care of ourselves from outside in, but it should be really from inside out. And talking to you and and knowing and doing my own stuff more and more. And as you know, I went through a lot of things in life. Um, it just keeps you uh, grounded and makes you realize and makes you appreciate the world. And, and you get detached with the external things. And that itself is keeps you calm because if you think about it, a lot of our emotion, a lot of our thing comes in because we cling on the stuff, like the job, like the house, the car, the clothes, the name brand is how people perceive us and how people recognize us by the title, not so much by our our true identity, how our spirit is. And that's why I want you to, I want you to, because that's your professional, that's what you teach. And I want women to hear you, especially, especially right now. So I want you to just tell me a little bit about right now. There's a lot of people out there that are to have mixed feeling of stress, anxiety, uncertainty, uh, fear, um, or simply like stuck or like confused. Like they don't know what to do. They don't have that much of uh, um, experience when it comes to this. Where should they start and how they should, you know, do something to at least get in touch with their spirit? Pray, pray, pray. I don't know what anything is for. I don't know what I'm doing, you know, and I'll share this story when I decided because it, you have to decide. I am committed to spirit. I am committed to healing myself. I am committed. It takes a decision, just like it takes a decision also to be happy. You know, you have to decide to be happy because our thoughts are the only thing that truly cause us pain. You know, we think it's external things, but it's our, it's our, our experience perception and then our projection of things that cause us pain. And, and so when we allow ourselves to say, wait, I don't know anything. And so when I decided to stop drinking alcohol, my prayer was this. I was like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what I'm doing. I am lost. I don't know what I'll do on a Friday, a Saturday, a birthday, a wedding at the club. You know, I was like, please show me what to do because I do not know. But take this from me so I never think about it again. Take it from me so I know that it is not good for me. And it left and has never come back. I've never been tempted. And I was drinking when I, I started drinking, I think, when I was about 13 or 14 years old. Right. All the women in my family were drinkers. You know, it started out with, the, you know, every night a glass of wine, and then it turned into something else, you know, but it was an everyday glass of wine. And so for me, it was normal. This is what I was, I grew up. This was, oh, this is how you end the day. And I said, no more. And I was drinking, you know, a bottle of wine a night. And when I asked spirit to take it from me, it left completely. I didn't have to try for it. I didn't have to, 
you know, and how I knew it was gone is because at first I was counting the days. I was like, oh, you know, 70 days, I haven't drank. Oh my God, I'm so proud of myself. And then one day I was in the shower and I was like, what day is it? I don't even remember because see, I was attaching, I was attaching my, my, my goodness on the number. But when I asked spirit to take it from me, Spirit took it from me so I didn't have to count because see, having counting the days was keeping me attached to making me feel like, oh, I'm so great, look what I'm doing. But when you ask spirit to take something from you, what you're really saying is, I no longer need this. I don't need to be attached to it. I don't need to count the days. I don't need to, the tick marks. Oh, I'm a good person, I didn't drink today. You just have to let it go. Yeah. You know, and I, that taught me something so valuable. And that's the thing. We don't let anything go. We want to hoard. We want to hold. We want to hinder our own progress. And the truth is we've got to let things go. Yeah. Is that apply with the, like a lot of us with the fear and overwhelm and frustration, anxiety as well? Absolutely. You know, because fear and anxiety. Okay. So fear is the basis of pain. Fear is the basis of so many things. And when you break it down, there is only fear and love, right? right. So anxiety, stress, overwhelm, all of those are connected to fear. What is connected to love? Happiness, joy, gratitude, peace. Do you see? They're both the same. I mean, it's fear in all these different words, but right. fear, you know, anxiety is about the future. Stress is about the past. Neither you can change except for how you are being in this exact moment. And so many people are caught up. No, that doesn't make sense. How can I not plan the future? You plan the future by how you're being right now. You know, it's just like I planted some new seeds for beets on Sunday with the full moon, lunar eclipse. I don't expect the beets to be here today. You know what I'm saying? But I planted them. It rained. So I was grateful for that Mother Earth blessing. They got nice moisture. They got everything that they need. Now I have to be patient and trust that those beets are coming forth. I'm not going to go dig them up. Are you growing seeds? Are you growing beets? No, I have to trust and know that I've planted the seeds. And so the beets will grow. And we have to do that for everything. I can't believe you said that because I did the same thing, except that I planted on a cucumber. I don't okay. know if you know this. Yeah, so cucumber, what it does is that like it grows first and it gives all these flowers first before the cucumber comes in. And even my daughter, she was saying that as the cucumbers are out, as the cucumber, I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. But for your saying, I literally every year, like you just said, I plan something to remind myself, to ground myself. Like when you plan something, when you put a seed, it doesn't grow overnight. And I'm so glad you mentioned that. And for ladies out there that are like you said, by being anxious of a future or living from the past that causing them all these pains and suffering, you should plan something and just look at that just to remind yourself whatever works to say, hey, be kind to yourself, be patient to yourself. What you do today, that's what matters, not what's going to happen. Because I mean, do you agree or not agree that we don't know? I mean, I know COVID is here. COVID is here. Everybody's scared. But our death is already designed. We don't know. It could be any, any day, any time, right? Any time. It could be any time. And and that's the thing. That's why it's so important to be grateful for every day. We woke up. Oh, God, thank you for waking me up. When I do a prayer, I pray for every spirit that takes its first breath and every spirit that takes its last. Every spirit, including the ant I might step on. You know what I'm saying? Or, and, and any baby that is born. You know, for, I mean, I know too, we have a bird's nest right above our door. And so the first birds, we thought, oh, the first birds, they already came. They came a few months ago. And so they're already out of the nest and gone. And now she's, we see, we saw a little baby egg. So we said, oh, she's got new babies now. Wow. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we have to trust and know, I mean, and, and two of them died. One fell out of the nest. Me and my husband tried so hard to put it back up there. And I was like, babe, this is the cycle of life. We have to trust and know that it will be all right. And so this is the first time, because she's been with us for a couple of years now, <laughs> these birds. So this is wow. the first time we're seeing her with a second set of birds. And now I know it's because two didn't make it previously. Do you see? 
Right. And so, so instead of her getting sad, she had to strengthen the ones who survived and knew she said, okay, I'm going to come back and have some more babies. Wow. You know, That's nature amazing. teaches us everything. Nature teaches us everything. We have a cow field right next door to us. Mm -hmm. What they do, is there's a farm. And so they pick all the corn and then the cows come in and, and clear out the rest. And there's these beautiful white birds. I don't know what they're called, but they are right next to the cow. So when the cow makes a step, then the bird goes in there and, and gets up all the bugs or whatever from each step. And I'm watching that and I'm like, who would have ever thought this big animal and this delicate little white bird work together for this field of corn to grow? Wow. You know, it, we just have to look at nature. It teaches us everything, but we're right. so caught up in here. We're so caught up in what we look like. We miss the little things. I and know. this is why I love living in nature, seeing the butterflies you know, my cats, you know, birds, I got the cows. And so it teaches me so much to, and, and really about being, um, you know, humility. Yeah. Because those animals, that's the thing about animals, they have no personality. They don't care what they look like. Yeah. They, they don't have an ego, you know, they don't have this ego self trying to tell them how to be better people or you need to be a better looking cow or you better lose some weight right, it is right, right. us you know? know and so looking at animals teaches me so much it teach it truly does it teaches me so much oh my god me and you are so much alike and, I, and then you you've been doing this for a while and i've been coming in i'm telling you every morning tanya i sit outside in my backyard and i meditate and um when i started this obviously in the winter time i can't do it but in the summertime i do as much as possible and then every Sunday I drive every Sunday. I said to my daughter, if I had to, people say, what do you live here or something? There's a, a little pond water. And I go there and I said, and like you said, just observing like these birds coming in and, and they look at the people and how the swans passes by and the ducks and everything. It just takes your mind to a whole nother world. And you say to yourself, wow, nature is actually, it's, it's really organized, Tanya. It's really, really organized. And, and you know, this is the thing, people come here to Puerto Vallarta in Mexico. People come here all the time, why? To come and sit with the ocean right. and soak up the sun. Why? Because it strengthens our bodies. And on top of that, then looking at the ocean calms us down, being in the ocean. What does that do? It clears the negative eons. It, you know, that sense of floating, that is, that's what surrender means to just, when I, you know, one of the first things I always do when I dive in is I float and then I look up at the sky and knowing I'm supported. Right. That's what surrender is, is knowing I'm supported. I don't know how it's working, the salt and the water and my body. I don't understand all of it, but I do know that I am being supported and lifted. No, even if a big wave comes, my body's still going to float on top of it it might come crashing down but right. it's not um you know what i'm saying it, it, right. it we can float if we allow ourselves to or we can drown we can sink you said it's it the perfect. heaviness in our body it's the heaviness in our mind that makes us sink i want to float you, you float. You said it's so perfectly tiny like like you said you can drown or you can stay above and and those little things it goes over our head it literally goes over our head because like you said, with the work and everything, how many times I tell, sometimes I tell my clients like write down hour by hour, what do you do? And just look at it where your energy is and how much time do you spend with your spirit that actually is always with you. And like you said, guiding you and you'd be Absolutely. amazed how many people they have that in the bottom of the list. And sometimes it's not even on the list. And, and this is why I wanted to ask you, why is it so important to practice the spirituality? Because we are spirit. You know, Beyonce came out with that song last year, Spirit. Right. And if you listen to the words, I mean, sh we have to recognize that this, again, is temporary, you know? And if we put it in religious terms, and, and I'm not religious, I'm spiritual, but I like to use visuals. Mm -hmm. So the spirit of the man known as Yeshua, a.k.a. Jesus, right. he's a spirit. His spirit has lived on. They have built churches and monuments all over the world for the spirit of this man who was living a long time ago, who was a master teacher. That's what he was, a master teacher. He had evolved his ego 
even that last moment, they know not what they do. And then after he died, then they're like, oh my goddess, look what we did. We did the wrong thing. And so this is where the lessons of forgiveness come in. We have to forgive ourselves. We have to forgive ourselves for thinking that we're wrong and that we're bad and what somebody else did to us and all these different things. Spirit, spirit is love. It's the thing that we nail ourselves to the cross every day because we think we're wrong. We think we've done something bad. We think they did something bad. But in truth, if you think about it, we, it is based on our perception. You know, I, I share the story and I don't know if this is the right place, but um, I, you know, as a child, I experienced every kind of abuse. I was neglected. I was sexually abused. I had no connection to my mother because I believe she was raped. So she had no connection to me whatsoever. And so I grew up through all of those circumstances without any true emotional connection. But it wasn't until I started connecting to myself again in nature as a little girl, I would go and sit for hours in nature. And that's when the psychic energy started happening for me when I started paying attention to it, because again, I was by myself and I spent a lot of time by myself. And then I started going to the library because I wanted to learn more about nature and birds and animals. And, and in that process, I learned about myself. But, you know, I was always looking for external experiences of love. And spirit kept telling me, I'm right here. I'm right here. You don't have to go looking for it. I'm right here. And when I learned that lesson, and I mean, I'm still learning that lesson. That's why forgiveness and spiritual, it's called practice for a reason, because you have to practice it. And I see so many people say, oh, I haven't had a chance to do my rituals or my altar or whatever. When it is important to you, then spirit will, when you want spirit to work for you, you've got to work for spirit. Right. You know, you can't just say, oh, God, help me. Give me the money. Give me the man. Give me the, the everything I want. I want it now. And you're not doing anything. You know, that's being selfish. That's being greedy. That's not honoring anybody or yourself. That's just wanting. And so many of us go around just wanting, 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 wanting. But what have you done to deserve that? Have you forgiven yourself? Have you, you know, you know, one of the biggest lessons too that people need to learn that judgment is a sword. When we're, when we're judging somebody else, we're cutting ourselves. We're cutting ourselves. And why are we cutting ourselves? Because we think we know better. We think you wrong. You look bad. You are this. You are that. Oh when did I become the God that I can judge somebody else? Remember the other story of the Bible, cast not the first stone. Who are you to cast stones? Are you, you know, bulletproof? Have you not made any mistakes in your life? Yes. So forgive spiritual practice is part of forgiveness. Because it starts with you. You have to forgive yourself. I forgive myself every morning because I don't know what thoughts I'm going to have or energy I might experience. But I know if I forgive myself first, then I'm already setting myself up for that opportunity. Oh my, I've already forgiven myself. And if I catch myself, you know, having a moment of judging, judging, why am I, what does this mean for me? I question myself because it's never ever about the other person. Wow. It's always about us, especially in time like this. Like you said, uh, yeah, I went through a period of time that um, I was very resentful. I was so resentful, and I was blaming everybody for everything. And then when I was like, okay, I learned that okay, you can't blame people for the stuff. You're responsible for it. Then I was really harsh on myself, and I was like, you know, if you if you if you would have done this, if you would have done that. So, like you said, forgiving yourself is actually what gives you that peace that you're looking for. And the door of opportunity will open because you're going to connect with like-minded people. Absolutely. You know, responsibility is not about, again, an external experience. If you break down the word response able, I am response able instead of react able, right? So most of us react. Oh, you said something. I'm reacting. 
But when we take responsibility and say, okay, perhaps this person is having a bad day, I'm just going to send them energy of peace because I'm in peace. You know, one of the, the reasons for spiritual practice truly is to stay centered in it at all times. So every morning I start, like I said, with all my different things, but I end my night the same way. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here. Thank you for another breath. Thank you that everybody I love is still alive. Thank you for the prosperity. Thank you for the abundance of food. Thank you for my beautiful cats and my husband and the work that I get to do. Thank you for another day. I made it. And that's why when you first wake up in the morning, thank you. I made it, you know, cause I know in our dream states, we go other places and some people do not wake up. Oh my God. Yeah, you're absolutely, you know? And so we've, we've got to be response able, able to respond instead of react. Yeah, listen more and pay attention to other people being kind, giving love. I find out one of the peaceful things that I it always makes me happy, uh, uh, Tanya, is if I do something for someone. And I don't mean financially, and I don't mean mm -hmm. like, you know, go out of your way to do it. Just simply like listening. Just just yeah. pick up the phone and listen without judging, without anything. Sometimes people just say stuff and then they feel better. And then you're like, okay, I was there for you and that's it. And like you said it so perfectly, like, be responsible and that's the, the way you break it down so people can understand that now it starts with you and then it just like energy kind of goes to the world and that's how you affect people right and this is why having a spiritual practice is so key because if you're you know like my yoga for me is an energy reset right. you know i'm clearing energy i'm doing the breath work all of that is saying I'm clearing away yesterday. There's a song by Sia, throw away yesterday. Today is a brand new day. Mm. You know, we, we reset, we have to reset our bodies. And this is why so many people are disconnected from their bodies. You know, so many people go to the gym with the, with the energy of wanting to look good, but having a healthy body is about our health. Right. You know, and if you're eating junk food and having negative thoughts and, and being judgmental and all about what you look like all the time, are you healthy? Right. You're not really healthy. You are projecting the idea of health through this body temple. But in fact, you have a negative mind, you have a negative heart, you are holding in hate, you are hating on yourself, hating on others. That does not radiate light. Light can only produce light. You know, it's just like when you put the two ends of the battery, the negative end never stays with the positive end. It's only when you put the two positive ends together that it works, right. you know? And so you can't have a negative mind and then want to have a beautiful experience. And we know what those people are when you, because energy is everything. And so you can have the most beautiful body in the world, but if you have a negative mind, you have a negative heart. And then people will see that. And then you're like, why don't I have any friends? Well, this is why you're the number three in the world because of your wisdom because of your experience and because of the life that you live and how you survived and how you turned that to like you said not so much drowning yourself but to positive but more importantly and i'm here and honored to say that you being in this group and i thank you so much and i'm so proud of you and i hope you're proud of yourself to take that to the next level uh, it's one thing that we survive but it's one thing to take to that next level and say, you know what, not only I survived, but I'm here to share my wisdom, my, my strategies, my tool, my technique to other women to, or to other human beings so they can see and hear me and say, hey, you know what, there's a light in the tunnel. You got to start today. Don't worry about the past. Don't be anxious of the future today here. And that's why I want you to be here and tell these wonderful women that how important it is to be in a present moment, to, to trust your uh, spirit, your energy, your internal thing. Like you said, you can go to the gym 10 times a day. It doesn't matter. But if inside you have all those negative and judging yourself is more poisonous than, than going around. So I'm sure they're going to want you. Are you working on something that you like, what did what they, I know you introduced yourself to the group, but where they can find you. 
They can find me on, on, on Instagram at Tanya R. Gonzalez, as well as Brown Girls Who Coach. Brown Girls Who Coach is my new community for Brown Girls Who Coach. It's really about community, connection, collaboration, and communion. We need each other. We grow together. Yeah. And especially for Brown Girls Who Coach, you know, there's so many coaches out there in the world now, but none of them are supporting us as Brown and Black women together in a place that again is grounded in spirit that's what this is all about because you've got to have your bliss for your business you've got to have that business for your brand and then that that's how you become a boss you know so it's really about being your own boss but in a way that is grounded in spirit because it's easy to say oh yeah i'm doing this i'm doing this i'm doing that but again it's got to come from spirit first so and Brown Girls Who Coach, we are doing, um, it's going to be a, um, we're really just getting it ready this summer. And so we're, our four key points are bliss, biz, brand, and Boston. So if you wow. know that that's something you're looking for, then you can find us both on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm Tanya Gonzalez on Facebook, Tanya R. Gonzalez on Instagram, and Brown Girls Who Coach on both. So thank you so much. Well, lady, and, there we go. This is how it is. But I, you're such a beautiful person inside out. Honestly. Thank you. Yeah. And, and you, last thing I want to just share, just last one quick thing, Valerie, is sure. that choose again. Every moment is an opportunity for you to choose again. Even, oh, I made a mistake. Choose again. Oh, I, 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 I messed up. Choose again. And that's what spiritual practice is, is giving yourself the break and the opportunity to choose again. And that's why I love A Course in Miracles, because it says every moment is an opportunity to choose again. Yeah. Choose love. Choose love. Thank well, you. Well, thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk to you. Thank you for having me, beloved. Yes. I'm so grateful, again, to be of service, to share, and to shine always. Well, thank you so much for being here. Stay, and then we'll bring you back. I'm sure they're gonna, the lady's going to ask you a question, but it's such an honor to have you in this uh, community. Thank you again. Women helping women is something that I absolutely love. So I send you and every single person watching Love and Life. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You have a wonderful, awesome day, and we'll see you soon. You too.